Welcome to the Knox service this morning. Am I audible? Welcome and acknowledgements. We acknowledge that the land on which we gather as the congregation of Knox Church is the traditional Treaty 7 territory of the Nitsitapi Blackfoot Confederacy, Kainai, Pikani, and Siksika, Sutina and Stony Nakoda people, as well as the homeland of the Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3. If you are watching this on our YouTube channel and wonder how you might participate in the live recording, email the church office and ask to be included on the weekly mailing list of the connection information and the bulletin. The email address is office at knoxcalgary.ca. We are now accepting donations of scarves, mittens, and hats to decorate the tree of warmth. All items will be donated to the Sheriff King Emergency Women's Shelter. If you missed the pageant last week, it, along with the Blue Christmas Service and the Christmas Eve Service of International Lessons and Carols, is available on Knox's YouTube channel. The services today and next week, January 3rd, will not be live streamed, but will be live on Zoom. Finally, thank you for remembering Knox in your prayers and your donations. You can send us your donation in one of three ways, through the post, through an email to donate at knoxcalgary.ca, through our website by clicking on the donate button. Now please join me in the call to worship. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise God, all you angels. Praise God, all you heavenly host. Let us all praise the Lord. Now please feel free to sing along. I'm sure Tom won't mind. Away in a manger. With me, Lord Jesus, I ask you to stay, to spy me forever, and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children, who look in the care, who us to heaven to be Let us pray. God of grace and glory, we we praise you from the heights and from the depths, in the heavens, on earth and from the seas, in the courts of power and from the sidewalks of our lives. Your splendor shines from a manger where the light of the world was born to pierce the darkness. In fragile flesh, you are revealed to us face to face. And so we gather with all people in every place who have glimpsed your salvation and grace to rejoice in your love born for us. 
Together we worship and praise you as creator, son, and spirit, source of life, glorious light, wisdom of the ages. Source of all hope, you invite us to live in the light and discover the splendor of your glory. We confess how we often choose to remain in the darkness instead. We allow our fears and hurts to hold us hostage. Our expectations of life prevent us from seeing new and real possibilities. You offer us unconditional love, but we expect others to earn our love. Forgive us. May the new life born in the manger awaken new life in us and allow hope to dawn in the year ahead. Psalm 148, praise the Lord, praise the Lord from the heavens, praise the Lord in the heights, praise the Lord all you angels, praise the Lord all the host of heaven, praise the Lord sun and moon, praise the Lord all you shining stars, praise the Lord you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, who commanded and they were created, who established them forever and ever, and fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling God's command, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, rulers of the earth and all peoples, leaders and all judges of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name alone is exalted, whose glory is above earth and heaven. The Lord has raised up a horn for the people, Praise for all the people, all the faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to their God. Praise the Lord. Our scripture reading this morning continues from Isaiah 61 in verse 10 through chapter 62, the first three verses. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up. So the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So as I set up for the service this morning or the sermon, I'm going to try to share my screen. So just let me get that set up. There, this should work. Okay. In previous sermons over the last month on Isaiah 40 and 61, I commented on the radical changes we see in the development of theology during the 
Second Temple period. Second and third Isaiah explore the ways in which God is present in the community. One can now say that the pillars of cloud and fire, external reminders and guidance for the community, are now replaced with expectations of righteousness and justice within the community. These are the inter internal indicators of God's presence within the community, and it depends on the community to make them real. And it is these, these pillars of justice and righteousness that draw attention to and distinguish God's people. On this first Sunday of Christmas, which also coincides with the second or third day of Christmas, depending on how you count, we read from Isaiah again at the end of chapter 61 into those first few verses of chapter 62. During this season of gift giving, Isaiah reminds us that the community will greatly rejoice. Our whole being will exult because of the amazing gifts the Lord has given the community. These are found as the Lord's presence, new clothing, and a new identity. And with such gifts, we have a new partnership with the Lord and a renewed responsibility. The community is not abandoned, desolate, or forsaken. How does the community come to know and remember that the Lord is present? It knows because there are words of comfort being proclaimed. As we heard three weeks ago at the beginning of second Isaiah's message, comfort, comfort my people, proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. The relationship with the Lord is possible because the Lord is present in the coming home of the exiles, in the restoration of a broken community. It is the way that the community is healed that the Lord is present. It is in the way that the community feels God's presence. There could have been the possibility of great hurt resentment and violence in the reintegration of the grandchildren of those who were taken into exile. However, the presence of the Lord means that healing is possible. Restoration is real, and the conditions of restoration and healing have been made possible so that those who know us understand that it is the pillars of justice and righteousness that distinguishes the Lord's people from all others. The Lord has provided new clothes, and with those new clothes come new possibilities. One must be properly attired for the task or journey at hand. It is here that we noticed, as I pointed out two weeks ago, the connection with first Isaiah. Left to itself, humanity seems to don the garments of violence and wears the robes of injustice and unrighteousness. However, no longer must the community wear the hand-me-downs of abandonment or desolation because the Lord has provided new clothes. Those threadbare clothes have been replaced with garments of salvation, which include a robe of righteousness. For healing and restoration, one needs the garments of salvation. Where we see these garments worn, we see the presence of the Lord through the actions of those wearing them. For these new clothes enable healing and justice and righteousness, and they help create a new people. The other gift of the Lord is a new name, a new identity. This identity, this name will come from the Lord. 
It will not come from those surrounding the community, from bullies or from those looking to take advantage of the community. No longer will you be called by the names they use, those schoolyard names, when they tell you you are desolate and abandoned, when they say you are forsaken and alone, when they say you are overlooked and ignored, when they say you are nothing, when they say you are not worthy of the fine clothes you have been given, you will never grow into them. Against all of these, the new name that the Lord will give arises from the actions of those who are courageous enough to wear the garments of salvation. And because the Lord has made it possible, you will be known by your actions. You will be known by your acts of justice. You will be known by your acts of inclusion and welcome. You will be known by your acts of righteousness. You will be known by the way you make safe space for everyone, encouraging them to wear the garments of salvation also. You will make this new identity real because the Lord has made it possible. The prophets proclaim throughout 2nd and 3rd Isaiah that the Lord is known by the Lord's actions and movement. The proof for the existence of God is not a propositional argument. There is nothing in our intellect that cares if there is a God. The proof of the Lord's presence among us is an existential reality. This dog-eat-dog -dog world thrives on injustice and unrighteousness. That is, justice for a select few and inequities that enable certain groups to take advantage of others. The evidence of the Lord's presence is the absence of privilege and inequity. It is the full inclusion of all creation along with the ability for all to have enough to live and thrive. Competition to be the biggest and best is replaced with competition to cooperate on the collective goal of enough health and wealth for all. Now the best gifts that we've been given this Christmas or that we're given any time of the year are not the ones that are put back in their box and stored or forgotten or regifted. The best gifts get used, they get shared and they make a difference in our lives. The Gospel of John tells us that Jesus was a gift from God, that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. As we are reminded in Isaiah, there is a humanity that God is still waiting to see emerge and blossom. In Jesus, we saw how the garments of salvation should be worn, we saw how the robe of righteousness looks on someone who lived that new identity made possible by the Lord. In Jesus, those gifts are still offered to us. As the Lord is known by the Lord's actions, so too are the Lord's people known by their actions. Let us don these gifts, these garments of salvation, and let our humanity emerge and blossom so that our new identity, our new role as God's children, truly emerges. Amen. Now I believe we have an anthem.
And now the prayers of the people. Let us pray. God of love, as we celebrate the birth and life of Jesus, our Savior, we are filled with thanks. Our gratitude overflows in prayers for our world, the world you love. We pray for all children. Guard their minds, protect their bodies, strengthen their characters and give them joy. Help them to look to the future with hope and trust. We pray for the most aged among us, those whom Simeon and Anna bring to mind. Protect them in the midst of the ongoing pandemic and reassure them of their value to you and to us, even when we cannot meet together. We pray for those whose hearts are filled with pain and fear. We pray for those for whom Christmas is linked with loss or grief. Surround each one with a strong sense of your comforting presence. We pray for those who do not have enough to eat and for those who lack adequate shelter in our community and in desperate corners of the world. For those who eat alone without the comfort of human contact and for those whose hearts and lives have been broken by trauma and loss, and for those who struggle with the many costs of the pandemic. Surround each one with a strong sense of your comforting presence. We pray for family members and friends, those nearby, and those we could not meet with the, the, this year. Remind them of our steadfast love, and to any who are struggling this season, O oh God, give your gift of peace. As the year draws to a close, we surrender to you, O oh God, the challenges it has held for us, so that they will not remain as burdens. Remind us of the good things that have offered us encouragement in times of isolation. We give you thanks for the people who continue to care for us and care about us. Give us courage and wisdom for the year ahead. We pray that our leaders will have wisdom and generosity of spirit for the decisions they must make on our behalf. Guide scientists working to produce vaccines against COVID-19 and support all those essential workers whose faithfulness to their responsibilities helps us all to cope in these difficult days. Grant us all the hope, joy, and peace we find through trusting you. As we pray together, the words of the inclusive Lord's Prayer. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, source of all that is and that shall be, father and mother of us all, loving God in whom is heaven. The hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings your commonwealth of peace and freedom, sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us, for you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. And now with Suho and Subin, we can sing O Little Town of Bethlehem.
sleep and dreamless, a silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark streets shall shine with everlasting light. Thou hopes and fears of What has come into being in Jesus is life, and it is the light of all people. That light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. Amen.
Okay. Oops. 